So continuing this discussion on feminism, I thought I'd uh, discuss the issue of silencing. It's a big, um, or and more generally, just the sort of power dynamics in conversations between men and women. Um, there's uh, now, now silencing does not usually mean uh, you know taping women's mouth shut or telling her to shut up or something. It's usually much more subtle than that. And silencing doesn't doesn't mean like literally making her not say anything, but um, basically like dismissing a woman's concerns making making it so that oh well you shut up about that we got more important things to do um one thing that often happens is uh when women bring up concerns about sexism patriarchy uh they're accused of being emotional or uh bring drama now um drama does happen I mean, I've, I've been involved in my share of YouTube drama before, I tr though I try to avoid it. Um, but, you notice that, you know, like, like whenever a woman, you know, complains about me, uh, how she's treated by men, she's accused of starting drama with them, um, which is a way of saying, oh, your your concerns are just trivial. It's, no, that's not, you're, you're just overreacting, you're being sensitive. And uh, notice there's actually a similarity in this sort of stereotype of women to uh, to a, a racial stereotype, the angry black man, right? You know, you know if, if, a, if a black man complains about racism, he's he's of, oh, you're so angry. Why can't you just smell out, you know? it's there, There's a way in which uh, the stereotypes we have in our culture are based on um, you know, taking someone's reaction to how you know, the white heteropatriarchy treats them and uh, putting the onus on them and saying, oh no, it's not that you're oppressed, it's just that you're you know, such and such a way that in which you overreact and such. So, I mean, that's, uh, uh, so, so like, try to look for that uh, in your in interactions with, uh, with women and see like when, when women bring up something and it's get, gets dismissed as drama, like consider like what, like, Maybe she was trying to raise something and you just shut her up. Like, um, and there's another thing that happens, and particularly within activist communities. Like, you know, I, you talk this talk about like anarchism and radicalism and, and stuff, you know, and it, it may seem like we have to really figure out. We, we don't, believe me. I mean, that's it. We're, we're more aware of these issues, but we still struggle with them a great deal. And, uh, one of them, is uh, with, when uh, uh, when women are accused of being divisive. Yeah, this happens a lot in, in activist circles when, um, you know, say, you know, we're, we're trying to um, you know, stop climate change or, you know, um, hold capitalism, work on some way, some like labor campaign, some of that. You know, we're we're trying to fight against capitalism or against environmental destruction, and here are these women who are just you know bringing up their concerns about sexism. Hey, please, you're you're dividing the movement. You're being divisive. We need you to to sit down and shut up and and focus on the real issues. Yeah, the the point is you're you're trivializing women's issues in relation to your own pet issue, and the point is um and I and I one thing I like about anarchism, even though we still definitely do not have our shit together, is that uh, whereas Marxism tends to focus more specifically on class, anarchists tend to see all systems of domination as as all in need of being addressed. And so, um, <laughs> which isn't to say there aren't plenty of uh, what we call manarchists who uh, are totally totally focused on class struggle and uh, dismiss concerns about um, uh Racial and gender inequality, so, um, but yeah, that's that's a common accusation is that is that a woman who complains about you know some guy's patriarchal behavior is being divisive, you know, and it's, it, this is it even plays into rape culture sometimes because because sometimes the guy is you know not respecting boundaries, but he's considered important to the movement, you know, and there are many women who've been pushed out of the movement because. Uh, because they'd rather get rid of her than address you know the guy who sexually assaulted her. So, I mean, if if I give the impression that radicals are just automatically more enlightened, I certainly uh, want to get uh, you know distance myself from from any such suggestion because we still have a lot of shit to work out. Um, but 
but yeah, that they're, they're, that's one of many ways in which women have their concerns dismissed. And another way that women are kind of a kind of more subtle uh, something related to silencing is this sort of uh, condescension, condescending way of talking to women, which has given the been given the uh, colloquial term mansplaining. Now, I'm not saying that uh, every instance of um, condescending talk is always mansplaining, and sometimes men do it to each other. Um, for example, when I was having the anarchism debate with uh, Hannibal the Victor, he was talking this condescending tone to me about government as if I had never taken a civics class. Yeah, I mean, so like the only way, like the only way I could possibly be an anarchist is if I was totally ignorant of how government actually worked. Which, like, no, I'm an anarchist because I understand how government works. Um, but um, with women, there there tends to be like it tends to happen more often to women, and and like I've had like a lot of women who don't even like. Who who never thought of it before? When you when you bring us up, they're like, oh yeah, now I, I remember this guy doing that to me in class the other day. It's basically you know there's this way with the, that guys feel like um, you know women out there need to be enlightened by their knowledge, and so you know they'll explain something to them that uh, the woman has given every every reason to believe they already know, but uh, but the guy's got to explain it to them because he's the guy he he knows what he's talking about and she needs to listen. Um, there was, I, I had a friend who, um, had an experience of this at the grocery market, uh, at the, um, grocery store where, um, she was buying, I think some blackberries to make blackberry wine. And, and this guy asked her about it, about what, what the blackberries were for. And she said, you know, I'm going to make blackberry wine. And he was like, oh, that's really difficult. Let me, let me explain to you how, how, how you do it. And he explained how, because he had experienced brewing beer at his ha- house that he, that, you know, he obviously had some idea of how to make blackberry wine. You know, just totally not even assuming that she would know what she's doing. Because, of course, she's a woman. And what, what kind of you know, crazy thing does she get in her head to think that, you know, she can make blackberry wine and without his expertise, you know, there, there's, um, the, there, there's all kinds of instances of this, of this where, where a guy, like, in order, the guy has to feel self-important enough that uh, a woman needs his expertise and his input, uh, you know, in order to get things straight. So that's, uh, you know, that, that's a little taste of mansplaining. I could probably, you know, think of a few other examples if you if you really you know need to, need to hear uh need to understand this phenomenon but um so there's also in terms of silencing there's also ways that allies are sil- silenced um and these unlike uh you know unlike the examples of women that i certainly i certainly have some direct experience with with these one of them is the idea that uh that if a guy speaks up uh, about sexism he's being a white knight now, white knight behavior is a real thing. There, there is, you know, if if a guy, you know, sees, you know, a boyfriend girlfriend arguing and like comes in and and says to the woman, "I'll protect you," you know, that that's being a white knight and you're being a jerk and you don't know what their drama is. Maybe they prefer to work it out themselves. On the other hand, if if it's if it gets violent, then maybe someone should intervene. So that's. so you know, there, there's there's a finally when what being white knight, but certainly like speaking out against sexist behavior and patriarchal behavior from other guys is not being a white knight. It's, uh, it's being a decent person and calling out what needs to be called out. Um, another accusation, which I've had frequently leveled at me is, uh, the idea that, that, uh, if you speak out, that if a guy speaks out about sexism, he's trying to score like, yeah, ladies, you know, you know, I'm just making this videos because I'm, because you know, you want me, huh? Right. <laughs> like, like, you know, like I'm never going to meet you. I, I, I'm doing this for because I think it's an important issue that needs to be addressed. Um, I don't really have a problem with like meeting women, so I don't like the the, uh, the idea that that somehow like it, that's that's what really interests me. Um, is these MRAs who you know, complain that you know guys who who uh, complain about about patriarchy are trying to get laid? Yeah, you know, it it it. it it suggests that they think that if they that if they themselves started uh, becoming aware of feminist issues, then that would get them laid. So, so they're so it means that they're deliberately not doing something that they are so certain will get them laid. So, so they must be some sort of monastic order, I think. That's yeah. The, 
I mean, they have to love celibacy that much that they would be a dick to people just to not get laid. <laughs> um, so, I mean, and then the, the first, the th- for more thing is that, um, is the charge that, well, you're not a woman, so you wouldn't know, uh, so you wouldn't know what you're talking about. And that, and that's interesting because you won't, because these are the same, the same people who won't listen to a woman because she's being dramatic and, uh, and over emotional. But uh, so, so there's, so, so we're listening to women is out for them. But then a guy speaks up and they're like, oh, well, you're not a woman, so what would you know about it? Well, yeah, I don't know what it's like to be a woman. Um, I tend to learn these things by listening. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, I, I also know what it's what it's like to uh, be a less informed man about these issues. And so I'm going to try to go take it upon myself to inform uh, these other men. Um, which, by the way, it's... I want, it should be clear by now that these videos are mainly directed at men because women don't need their own oppression explained to them. If, if I were trying to do that, that would be a very egregious example of mansplaining. So, yeah, I'm, see, I'm, I'm talking to fellow men here because we all need to hear it. Um, and sometimes, you know, hearing it from a woman is, yeah, is not going to register. And maybe it's not going to register when I when I'm talking about this stuff either, but I have to do do my part. So, um, oh, um, one other thing that um, is often used as a sound thing is sort of uh, where where you can't talk about women's issues unless you relate it back to men. There's always this "what about the men" thing, and, that, and that's not that's not just something that that uh, MRAs do. Uh, even men who were uh, uh, who who are sort of somewhat versed in uh, feminism will say, well, yeah, well, well, patriarchy affects men too, and it does, and that's actually what I'm like, I'm what I'm going to do my next video on, but um, the point is, but the point is, you, you can't just always bring that up anytime anyone talks about uh, patriarchy and how it affects women, because what you're saying is that. Oh, it's only important. Patriarchy is only important insofar as it, as it affects men. We can't talk about women's issues as it uh, as it affects women. So that's um, so. Yeah, next video I'll be talking about pa- men and patriarchy, in trying to uh, diffuse uh, in the process some of the uh, MRA claims about uh, about about uh, so-called matriarchy, and talk about how many of the uh, Issues that affect that uh, that do affect men arise arise from pa- arise from from patriarchy, and why it's still um, uh, important to ally ourselves with women in their struggles, and not just focus on our own. So, um, thanks for listening. Peace.